Representative Katie Porter announced she will be running for Senator Dianne Feinstein's California Senate seat in 2024. Porter has previously acknowledged that she was considering a bid for this expected open seat. According to The Hill, while Feinstein has not officially announced her retirement, it is anticipated that she will in the next few months. Let's watch part of Porter's announcement video. California needs a warrior in Washington. That's exactly why I'm announcing my candidacy for the United States Senate in 2024. I don't do Congress the way others often do. I use whatever power I have to speak hard truths to the powers that be, to not just challenge the status quo, but call it out, name names, and demand justice. That goes for taking on Wall Street and the big banks, big oil, and big pharma. It's why I refuse to accept corporate PAC and lobbyist campaign money. I don't want it. And I'm leading the fight to ban congressional stock trading because it's just wrong. To win these fights, it's time for new leadership in the U.S. Senate. If you agree, please go to katieporter.com and join my campaign for the U.S. Senate today. Thank you for caring about the California we can build together. According to Fox News, Porter's Senate campaign could be tainted by allegations of uh, toxic workplace culture. An ex-staffer alleged that the congresswoman made rude and even racist comments to staff and said that she, quote, ridiculed people for reporting sexual harassment. Uh, and we actually did interview a former Katie Porter staffer mm -hmm. on the show last week, last I week, believe. I um, about It was an interesting story. I'd encourage people to go back and watch that clip if they missed it. Um, she, the staffer got blamed for giving Representative Porter COVID. After she had gone to a funeral for one of her uh, former Yeah, she was going members. through something yeah. kind of traumatic. And, and the texts are are pretty, I mean, I, I personally have a pretty high bar for, I think I, you know, there's a lot of complaining, anonymous complaining from staffers about how they're sure. treated. I think maybe a lot of young people, maybe Gen Z people don't understand that you actually have to work sometimes. And boss is sometimes gonna be a little, little uh, strict with you. This one seemed to go over a, a kind of line because we saw the text message where Katie Porter is just berating this woman for for allegedly giving her COVID. But what, who had right. COVID or first? Or at least it was demonstrating a certain lack of sensitivity that I think yeah. would be warranted in the in the circumstances. Anyway, I'm not saying that. However, you, you want to talk about her more yeah, broad I mean, policy? That's the, fine. The but. thing is that Katie Porter, regardless, I think has been one of the least disappointing progressives of the 2018 bunch for a couple of reasons. One, she didn't overextend herself in making kind of broad, very lefty commitments the way that some of the squad members have. I don't believe she's ever identified as a socialist, um, hasn't really uh, defined herself in terms of policies like abolish ICE or defund the police the way that some of the others have. She stayed more squarely in an economic populist pocket, which has made her incredibly popular. Her whiteboard display Plays where she, you know, calls out the big banks. She was a member of the Financial Services Committee, which is a committee that people love to be on because of your proximity to Wall Street and your ability to fundraise from those institutions. She was, in fact, kicked off said committee after two, two years on it by Maxine Waters, apparently because her demonstrations were so effective, it was basically embarrassing people mm -hmm. who wanted to go ahead and be able to use these banks as a fundraising tool. So she's very effective. She flipped a red district blue back in 2018, despite being extremely progressive on an economic front. And I think it's the kind of person who could have a long, hmm. very public career in, in politics, as leftists are looking to see who can carry the banner potentially in another presidential run. Someone like Katie Porter, I think, has a lot of features that would make her a broadly appealing candidate uh, in a way that some of the other squad members might start to flag on a national basis. However, um, you know, despite all of those, I think, wonderful attributes, <laughs> she's received some pushback from Democrats, from liberals, about the nature and timing of her announcement. One Twitter user, in fact, critical of Katie Porter's choice to announce when she did announce, uh, ended up saying it's pretty disrespectful to announce ahead of Feinstein's decision. And this is one of the worst campaign launch videos I've ever seen. Another said yesterday, and an Adam Schiff source tells me not to expect a Senate announcement today. You don't announce a campaign in the middle of a natural disaster. Uh, this is hilarious <laughs> to think that they have to wait for Dianne Feinstein to say she's gonna retire. Like, she doesn't own this seat, and I'm sorry, this is not, not trying to be mean here, but we've covered this. This is an open secret now that Senator Feinstein is very old, 
and is having issues knowing who she is talking to and what's going on. It is absolutely unacceptable that she is still in the Senate. She, this is not my opinion. This is re reporting. This, this has been very well demonstrated by people she talks to that she is not capable of doing the job, that, that she's, she's in a, a kind of elderly state where she has good days and she has bad days. But it is, it is inconceivable that she has not retired yet. She must retire. And no one should feel like they have to wait. It doesn't belong to her, especially given what's going on with her. I think that's right. the most absurd thinking. Yeah, it's pretty bizarre. It definitely has uh, the flair of those Ruth Bader Ginsburg, don't retire. It's your turn pieces that got written about when people raised the mm -hmm. legitimate concern about a woman who had survived pancreatic cancer, one of the most deadly kinds of cancers, regrettably, continuing on the bench into a Republican administration, hoping, apparently, that she could have Hillary Clinton replace her. The hubris of saying, I want to be replaced by the first woman president, and therefore I'm not going to step down under Obama. Um, you know, has caused a lot of what uh, Democrats are contending with today in terms of uh, Roe v. Wade in the Supreme Court. I mean, even the most sympathetic pro-woman columnist like uh, Rebecca Traister, who I think participated in a lot of that leave RBG alone, she can retire when she wants to uh, rhetoric, has said after a 30-minute phone call she had with Diane Feinstein that while nothing suggested a deterioration beyond what would be normal for a person her age, the call didn't demonstrate any urgent engagement with the various crises facing the nation. Every question I asked about the radicalization of the GOP, the end of Roe, the failures of Congress, was met with a similar sunny imperviousness, evincing an undiminished belief in institutional power that may in fact explain a lot about where Feinstein and other Democratic leaders have gone wrong. And that's from one of the most pro girl boss writers mm -hmm. that you're going to find in the United States of America. Right. And with RBG, I, unlike Feinstein, it wasn't I, I don't think people were asserting that right. she was cognitively diminished. I think yeah. she was as sharp as she as ever to the to the very end. Sure. It's just that she was making the calculation that she would have to survive a, an entire Republican term right. if she was not going to retire before Republican or potentially two Republican right. terms. Or more, I think that she she wasn't making that calculation at all. I think that she was yeah. so confident that Hillary was going to win and that Trump possibly yeah. could not win, which in some ways to me is worse because yeah. it's, it's just so hubristic. So, so hubristic. <laughs> well, Ruth Conda forever. Ruth Conda Stop. forever. All right. Well, we're rising for you after this. <laughs>